I think I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, all right, no, I'm done. We're not doing this episode. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> oh, oh, that worked out about as well as I thought it was going to. Uh, do I even try now? Do I even yeah. have yep. to do yeah, anything? Go yep. Bring us Commit home. to the bit. Get up. It's the silver line. <laughs> oh, I fucked it up. I did no, the no, wrong no, words. Going. That was good. That was good. Keep going. <sighs> okay. Two, three, four. Oh. Get up. It's the spooky linings playlist. You fucker, get up. It's the spooky linings playlist. And I'm Nathan Simmons, and we're trying to find <laughs> the silver linings in some of cinema's <laughs> sickest endings. <laughs> That may be the best intro we've ever done, guys. The slash worst. Holy fuck. My my heart hurts. My stomach is killing me now. Mally, I sent you the video of guys doing this at karaoke, and it's like you tried to do an impression of them. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Oh, good. Can you feel that? I was like, what? Oh, shit. My forehead is sweating. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Guys, oh. I don't even know if we can do this. No, no, <laughs> no. This is like the Snyder cut of intros. It's going so long. Uh, there's unnecessary singing. <laughs> Holy shit, man, guys! This I'm gonna say <laughs> it right right off the top. Please do. This is a horny movie, guys. This yeah. I'm gonna say this right off the top. We're not topping this episode ever. No, like, this is the best. Funny. This, this is, is the already best the best thing we've ever done. Yeah, this is a good. This is good content. <laughs> It's a horny movie Ugh. and very sweaty. It's a very, very sweaty, sweaty movie. movie. This is the sweatiest movie maybe since Angel Heart. My eyes are sweating right now. Sweatiest and horniest. <laughs> ah, dude, I don't know. You think this is this might be sweatier than Angel Heart? It's it's at least uh, it's at least hornier than Angel Heart. I think. Oh, absolutely. It, it's between Angel Heart and Casino Royale in terms of the sweatiness. Sure. Yeah. Dawn of the sweat. Man, uh, my my ribs hurt. Me too. <laughs> I don't feel good. <laughs> Our Dawn of the Dead seventy eight episode. It starts with a bit, but it's a bit that has like some reverence for the movie we're covering. And then this one, we're just like, so you you do disturbed, I'll do Richard Cheese, and I'll I'll help, and, I, and I'm also here. <laughs> and Dustin, and Dustin, you just be there. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 cheerleading. I'm on the sidelines. Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead is a movie that starts with fire that turns into a skull that turns into an X-ray. Yeah, and then turns into somewhat misogynistic berating of an employee sort of yeah oh uh, sorry i'm still trying to catch my breath i'm sorry <laughs> that doctor's and that doctor's a nice guy though so it's fun yeah, yeah he seems really cool yeah he seems like the doctor from blue valentine that's trying to move in on ryan gosling's <laughs> wife but yeah sure <laughs> oh that son of a bitch listener holy shit I, I don't even know what to say if you've never listened to the show before but <laughs> we're sorry yeah <laughs> I'm not. I'm somewhere between I'm sorry and you're welcome. I don't know. But this is 
the, if you didn't catch the title, the Spooky Linings playlist, yeah. a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's spookiest endings. This is, for all intents and purposes, guys, this is it. This is the, the end, the culmination of our spooky month. Oh, yeah, you're right. I will say this. As kind of a foreshadowing, we are not getting done with spooky movies no. just because November starts. No. We we have a couple in the chamber already. There For are sure. some spooky movies. Yeah. Oh yeah, we ab- we about to haunt your Thanksgiving. Time. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're keeping this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The spooky train is coming off the rails, but it's not it's not flipping over just yet. Right. <laughs> it's, it's derailing for sure, but just like the intro of this episode. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! And some of the some of the uh, vehicles in this movie just fucking vehicles. Vehicles do not work in this universe. Not at all. Every every car is very top heavy. Yeah. But we are talking about Dawn of the Dead, two thousand four mm-hmm. remake. Guys, this movie. I don't know. I have a weird relationship with it. I feel like. When I first saw it in like 20 or 2004 or 2005, whenever I mm-hmm. first saw it, I liked it a lot. Yeah. And I think a lot of people did. This rewatch, not so much. I yeah. Mean, there's some fun parts. There's some cool stuff. I still had a good time. Yeah. I think my problem with it is Dawn of the Dead, the OG, was both fun and had a message. This has no message whatsoever. It's right. just things happen and that's it <laughs> i will say this was i think i mentioned last last week's episode i this i saw this before the original Oof. um and i really liked it and i've seen it uh, uh once or twice since then and you know usually it's a it's a pretty good time but like i think it also doesn't help this movie standing to as we did watch it back to back with the OG. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot to like about this movie. There's a lot to nitpick for sure. There's a lot of problems, but also there there's an elegance to the OG. And I, I feel like we should try up top to get some of those out so that we're not just constantly like, cause I think, I think it does like this movie is no masterpiece, but I also think it does most movies a disservice if like we're constantly comparing. You know what I mean? I agree. Sure. I agree. I mean, the comparisons are very few. Right. Uh, and far between. Like, I mean, it's it's the basic bones of the plot. Exactly. Because yeah. me and Nathan kind of talked about this off air. Like, mm-hmm. I don't consider this a remake. Oh, no, we're getting into the weeds now between remake, reboot, reimagining. <laughs> I'm going reimagining. Sure. Because it's just like. Zombie apocalypse in a mall. That's the similarity. And sure. I and I'm okay with the idea of someone being like, let's take the bones of this and do something new with it. Yeah. But the movie also insists upon the fact that it's a legacy because there are there are several cameos from stars of the original movie. Mm-hmm. There are lines of dialogue from the original. There's some sound cues that are the same. Yep. And so it's it it kind of it, it kind of wants to be its own thing, but also has it, it can't help but wink at the at the audience yeah. as well. Right, exactly. It differs greatly in like the Halloween movie we just did. And like sure. yeah, there's a little bit of winking, but it takes itself very seriously. It's slick and it's directed well. This movie is just like Let's just have fun with this idea. And fucking horny. It's very horny. It's so fucking horny. <laughs> this movie has a weird relationship with women. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. To to the point where there are there are a couple of characters that are not characters. They are either like there... the main character, like Anna, who does... She, n- yeah. Why is she the protagonist? Sarah Polly's performance, I think, is good, but yeah. she is given nothing to do in this movie. There, her character goes through no arc. No. She randomly becomes Jake Weber's uh, love interest Sure. in the last five minutes of the movie yeah. but also like uh, there's other characters that show up halfway through the movie that get more screen time than she does there is a character monica shows up and doesn't have any dialogue until she's telling someone to fuck her harder mm-hmm. and she is described on the wikipedia page as monica a conspicuously sexy woman wait which is the weirdest fucking thing i've ever read wait, <laughs> What? How do you be conspicuously sexy? I don't. I don't know. Like, how does that like, work? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I feel like you're either you're either obviously sexy or obviously not. I don't think. Well, can... I'm conspicuously sexy in the fact that like my chest and my ass point in like different directions. Like one's going <laughs> left, one's going right. Like, and it makes me it makes me irresistible. Oh my god! I mean, that's the pull quote of the episode. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that was amazing. Maybe we need to start a new bit in like. How Mally or how Nathan is comparing himself to Nick Cage and Mandy and Michael in Halloween 2018. Sure. Which character is Nathan? Is the new oh, bit good. We need to do? Oh, that's my favorite. So, so Monica? Are we? We're saying Monica I mean, is Nathan. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm. I don't know, man. Uh, I feel like I'm more of a Tucker. You are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, this is unfortunate, but I think I'm Steve, yeah. which yeah. is problematic for Nathan. Ma- Nathan, please tell Belly to fuck you harder. Please go ahead. I shan't. But <laughs> show your tits and tell them. That's a- I shan't. What What you want, Nathan? <laughs> Whoa, Nathan, how? How would you want it? I love this episode so much already. Th- there are way <laughs> too many fucking characters in this movie. Oh my god. There's a lot. Guys, guys, yes, but we are so far deep in the weeds. We haven't even done proper like introductions at all to the show. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm Nathan Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> you, you heard so eloquently pull off the disturbed ah, 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 is Mally Moore, of course. Of course. Fucking nailed it. I had... I had a pretty good intro, so I'm just going to leave that there. Yeah. But we're um, let's let's talk about the first time we saw 2004 Zone of the Dead. Nathan, you saw you, you said you saw it before the uh, the original. Yeah. Mally, what about you? Oh, I saw this in theaters. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. How was that? It was. Well, how old were you? You had to been like what, like 16, 17? Yeah, I think I was. Uh, this was 04, so I would have been a freshman in high yeah. school, I think. So did you have to get like your mom to buy the ticket or something, or did your mom come with you? No, I think my brother took. Me. Oh, okay. This was the movie that this was how i found out that my dad was scared of zombies oh and i i as the credits rolled my dad said i feel like i've been traumatized <laughs> like he literally was just like that movie like came after us like, well i mean to be fair this movie comes out less than two years after 28 days later mm-hmm. and i feel like both of those movies really revamped what zombies were oh, in yeah, terms yeah. of the popular culture. Well, like, and this movie was almost called 400 and... Uh, fuck, I can't do the math. 430 <laughs> days later. 530 days later, whatever. I so get it. Let's, let's, ad- let's address this right off the top. Oh, 700. How do we feel about fast zombies? I'm fine with it. Eh. I don't... It doesn't bother me. But Well, I guess it depends on the movie. Yes. Because yes. like, I like the slow, shambling zombies of the og but i like the fast zombies in like train to busan okay right. like i think it depends on what context you're trying to make with the statement because the zombie the the behavior of the zombie is very it's very important to whatever message you're trying to tell right like you when was the last time we saw slow shambling zombies in a movie uh in a movie john, john of the dead yeah maybe so I mean, obviously, obviously, the the Walking Dead does you know more classic zombies. Yeah, but the Walking Dead is absolute garbage. So um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't think of a movie recently that's done slow shambling. Zomb- I I kind of miss that era. Yeah, you know. I mean, I do like the animalistic like nature. Like, I think it's not a movie, but a good comparison would be how they handled zombies in the uh, remake of Resident Evil 2, where it's like you have the slow shambling zombies, but they're also very animalistic in nature and have those... They're vicious. Yes. Yeah. They are fucking terrifying in that game. So yeah. I'm hoping by this time this comes out, I think uh, the new Resident Evil movie will be out. So I'm, I'm wondering what they're going to do with that. Is they're going to play into the slow shambling nature that they originated from? Or right. are they going to go with this kind of portrayal i don't know i don't know judging by how like accurate to the games like lisa trevor looks from those screenshots that's very like, true i i feel like we're gonna get some like classic uh resident evil zombies very true but yeah i don't know to answer your question i don't know i i, I can go either way i guess it just depends on the movie itself yeah i mean this one's supposed to be like a fucked up haunted house like thrill ride kind of movie i mm-hmm. think like so i i think this one, this one has a very like a Halloween Horror Nights vibe, where something's gonna come running at me. It's not mm-hmm. gonna, you know, sneak up on me. Ooh, I'm gonna sneak up on you. Okay. <laughs> Have they done any like uh, Halloween Horror Nights or something like that based on this movie? Yeah, they did one where Zack Snyder would actually jump out and <laughs> punch you in the face. Oh, yeah. cool! <laughs> <laughs> and steal your money. <laughs> he would shake you and say, "Watch the three and a half hour cut of Watchmen." Oh God! <laughs> it's got tales from the Black Freighter in it. Very important to him. I know. I mean, I guess, like you said, watching these back to back, these zombies are more interesting to watch on camera. Yeah. But the actual nature of the zombies is more interesting in the OG of like why they're zombies and like right. why they're at the mall. These are just literally just random people that are just there. Yeah. The, the this These might as well have like the super rabies from 28 days later. Exactly. 
but yeah, Dawn of the Dead, 2004. Like I said, I I, I come and go every time I see this movie. I, there's things I like. There's things I don't. Mm-hmm. I feel like the navel gazing in this movie of like, let's just have a montage. It's not nearly as interesting or fun as because like, let's be honest, the OG Dawn of the Dead, all the mall stuff. It's a lot of navel gazing. It's just like, let's just hang around, man. <laughs> Those characters, there's there's fewer of them. They get to know each other. We get to know and we get to know them. Yes. And in this movie, I don't even think most of the characters like like each other does anyone know the older lady's name that drives the pick the the big rig? norma because i had to look it up <laughs> okay there you go what about um what was the what was uh the girl's name that has the dog uh shit i i also wrote exactly that down. yeah exactly the fact that we can't tell <laughs> wait nicole nicole yeah yeah i don't know and cj and terry and steve and michael and anna Terry and cj and bart <laughs> and tucker <laughs> you just named characters from the movie Dustin. i know because i'm looking at it <laughs> oh <laughs> no yeah there's way too many people in this movie and cj and steve are almost essentially the same character like right. they're both assholes they're both rude to women. Just one of them gets a redemption arc. <laughs> one of them gets to to fuck, and that's it. Yeah, but Steve is rich. Was he rich, or is he, is he like, you know, a Banana Republic rich? <laughs> <laughs> Banana Republic rich? <laughs> I hated that character. Like, yeah. so, I thought he was so poorly written. I think Ty Burrell's doing the best he can with, like a nothing part i would hate that character if it wasn't ty burrell but I since agree. It's ty burrell i fucking love him oh, I, I mean i hate him but i i think he's he's very entertaining yeah for sure well let's talk about um some of the information regarding this dawn of the dead reimagining from 2004 sure It's a movie and moving on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a movie from 2004, directed by Zack Snyder and written by the man himself, James Gunn. Wild. Who has been quoted as saying he got a lot of death threats when it came out that he was going to be the one writing this movie because the only real thing he had done before that was fucking Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, because the people, yeah, most people didn't know like the trauma shit that he'd done before that. Yeah, right, exactly. 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 Uh, the movie stars, interestingly enough, Roger Ebert lists Mackay Pfeiffer first. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, he was big. Was this post 8 Mile? Yes. Yeah. The, yeah, 8 Mile was 2002. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Mackay was riding high at this point, then. For sure. I fucking love Mackay Pfeiffer. I He's always good. Well, hey, n- well, Nathan, this ain't no movie. There is no Mackay Pfeiffer. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I have, I have to That's do good. it. I That's good. That's good. Three episodes in a row, I know. baby. I know. I had to do it. Call it a hat trick. Uh, the movie stars Mackay Pfeiffer, Sarah Pauly, Jack Weber, or Jake Weber, excuse me, <laughs> Ving Rames, Michael Kelly, Kim Poirier, uh, Ty Burrell, and Terry. The character of Terry is played by a guy I can't pronounce his last name. Kevin Ziegers. Yeah, is that how you pronounce it? I think so. Okay, sure. Uh, the movie had a budget of twenty six million dollars, which is crazy when you compare that to George Romero having. Six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, right? And managed to gross a hundred and two million dollars worldwide. So it was a hit. Yeah, I mean, it got James Gunn get Slither produced. It got uh, Zack Snyder the gig for three hundred. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was like this was a career maker for those guys. Yeah, yeah. And a shame that like other than the people that were already stars like Mackay Pfeiffer and Ving Rhames, like nobody really went on to do much from this movie. I mean, right? Ty Burrell, of course, went on to uh, his uh, TV show, and Michael Kelly went to House of Cards. But mm-hmm. like Jack Weber's kind of never really broken out or jake weber god damn it i'm gonna keep doing that. i mean this would rule if it was jack weber uh or steven <laughs> weber um J- uh, jake weber was on medium for years like that yes. he was like a main cast member on that but that's like i think maybe his most well-known role aside from this yeah for sure and the movie currently sits almost 20 points lower 75 percent on rotten tomatoes interesting i think that's fair yeah that yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know i might even knock it down a little bit further than that if sure. i'm being honest well guys i haven't watched this trailer since i think the movie came out yeah I, I, I think i think same yeah i couldn't tell you the last time i saw this all right well let's revisit it hey vivian and hey, look i can go backwards let me see hey that's amazing evening oh they're gonna take us through all the parts of the day night night oh god damn it dawn dawn 
What was it? Dawn in like red letters. That would be the smart thing to do. Yeah, like Breaking Dawn, <laughs> the best movie ever made. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, the best movies ever made. <laughs> you fixed it. I saw part one of that movie in theaters. <laughs> Boy, what? You shut the fuck up. Not because I wanted to. Honey, are you okay? I do remember that most of the trailer was this. Yeah. She chucks that kid, yeah. too. Oh, like, yeah. It's pretty hilarious. That's That's been a running thing this season. It's just the yeeting of children. <laughs> <laughs> Which I am here for. Oh, no. The dead will walk the earth. They used the quote? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was on the posters. Yeah, oh. it was. I remember that. Speaking of that, who is on the, the DVD cover? Just that one zombie. I don't know. Uh, that is uh, Zombie Joe. Ah, of course. How could we forget? Wait, which one? Uh, the DVD cover that I know of is like the the silhouettes of all the zombies. Yeah, but there's, I think it's the director's cut. It's just like one zombie, like a chubby white dude. Wait, there's a director's cut of Snyder's Zon uh, Dawn of the Dead? Oh, yeah. I think it's like an uncut. The, the unrated cut. Yeah. Yeah. Zon of the Dead. Maybe they're coming. Um, I'm just getting the original. The unrated cut just has the title bigger. Hold on, I'll see if I can find it. Our baby's gonna be fine. It's only a matter of time. It's coming. They'll find a way in. Oh god. This trailer's not great. Nope. No. Kind of boring. Yeah, weirdly boring, weirdly spoils a lot of kills. I don't know what they're doing with this effect. There's, yeah, the weird ramping effect. The color coding is terrible. Ooh. Oh, and oh, you know what they're doing? They're stealing the editing from the Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw exactly. remake trailer. Yeah, See, that's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah, that like silhouette on the windows. Dawn of the Dead. This looks like a romance. Like the title looks like a romantic. It looks like a romance novel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Weird. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, not a great trailer. There was something I I, I think I touched on this in the Freddy versus Jason episode, but I don't love the way movies looked at this specific time. No, the 2000s were garbage in terms of <laughs> titles, trailers. Well, no, it was it was just turn the contrast all the way up. Oh right. my god! Release. I'm glad you said that. That's one of my notes in this movie. Um, in for this movie <laughs> i wrote down everything's glossy but dark at the same time yeah. and usually blue and the problem is snyder still shoots his movies like that <laughs> that's I, true I, but like this looks like an underworld movie <laughs> like that's was this how... shot on film does anyone know i have no idea it looks like it could be can we get utah in here <laughs> around that time yeah absolutely it was yeah but for some reason the contrast is up and the saturation is like 120 percent right but like because of that you lose all the detail and all the blacks like right. everything that's in the darkness you can't see shit which i guess yeah is... yeah the, it was a big thing like especially 2003 to 2005 like even movies that i love like hellboy like which i think is still pretty colorful yeah you know you you lose a lot of it because they yeah they've cranked the contrast up like crazy i just put in the chat the dawn of the dead directors cover oh i saw it it just looks like a random fat zombie extra no idea who it is yeah that is very strange lucky guy i guess <laughs> look at him just gets to be the sole one on the director's cut or whatever exclusive or director's cut <laughs> what accent was that supposed to be i don't know <laughs> would like to see the baby <laughs> Let's get into the actual movie. Sure. And speaking of seeing the baby, <sighs> oof, I know that's like way into the movie, but I want to talk about it now. One of the biggest missteps in the film. It's it's the jumping the shark yes. moment for sure. What the fuck? Don't show the baby if you're gonna if you're gonna carry that out. Like just don't show it. Well, from what I read too, Zack Snyder wanted the baby to actually like kill the mom. Yeah, yeah attack the mom, and they're like, oh, we can't do that. It's too graphic. And I'm like. Have you seen this movie? Like, yeah, a woman's water breaking is just her spewing blood out of her private parts. <laughs> yeah, this movie is insane. Also, I don't I don't want to call it jumping the shark anymore. I think it should be called eating, eating the, the baby. baby. Ooh. But that's just me. Eating, eating the zombie baby. Yeah. Was it Norma? That's the older woman's name. That's yes. the older woman. Yeah. MVP of the movie. Oh, yeah. She fucking headshots the zombie mom just immediately. <laughs> no hesitation. Yeah. Just pops her right in the face yeah. joe joe lipset from from horror queers referred to it as a like a john woo style yeah. <laughs> shootout it really is it's just like it's so funny it's well the bullets are the bullet shells hitting the grounds in slow motion she puts a cigarette out and there's a close-up of her boot my god <laughs> this is like there is a 
the, every single time Ving Rhames fires his shotgun, we have to have a zoom in on his face mm-hmm. and then a slow-mo shot of the fire, the shot discharging, and then a slow-mo shot of a single shell hitting the ground. And yep. it happens four times. It's so funny. Well, I got to tell you, uh, this may be a controversial take. I think this is Zack Snyder's most tame movie that he's ever done. I agree. Yeah. No, I fully agree. In, in terms of his stylistic choices. Yeah, he's not doing his thing as much, but this was also his first feature film. So. He still has a knack for on the nose, annoying needle drops. Oh, my <laughs> like, God. Yes. Yeah. I, as much as I I both love and despise the the Richard Cheese needle drop. Oh, I fucking love it. I think it's great. I think it's fucking great. Yeah. It's hilarious. How, do, how does that song go, Nathan? <laughs> Ooh, ah, 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 ah. Mm, that is. Uh, speaking of cheese, that is cheese in my ears. It's just mm. Velveeta. Just <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Just creamy Velveeta oozing yeah. all over your face. Yeah. Ears. Yeah. Guys, I have so many fond memories of me discovering this movie and discovering who Richard Cheese was. Sure. And I had a buddy that would come over on the weekend. We would play Resident Evil 4. <laughs> That's not where I thought this story was going. We would order crystals and we would play Resident Evil 4, eat crystals, and listen to Richard Cheese. That's great. This is a good weekend. That sounds sounds disgusting oh it was gr- oh the room was disgusting i think the same album that had this one had his cover of baby got back on it i think i think you're right and nathan you ha- get sprung okay, i was gonna ask how does it go <laughs> dude, he's still still putting out albums like yeah. he's a vegas act yes like that dude is huge and oh, man the name richard cheese dick cheese like you said it's on the nose <laughs> so good <laughs> on the nose and in your ears <laughs> zach's not still using it because he uses him in army of the dead as well that's right yeah oh uh, yeah we should have had a scene in in batman v superman where richard <laughs> cheese is just going na 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 batman <laughs> <laughs> not opposed to it that would have been fucking amazing <laughs> honestly anything could improve that movie yep speaking of songs how y'all feel about the opening title song on this oh my god it's great it's fantastic it's great oh the man who co- when the man comes around is yeah is used exquisitely these opening titles are incredible yeah, they're so good I, I maybe a controversial statement i think they're maybe an all-timer opening title sequence like yeah. I, yeah? I think this is great like genuinely great T- one thing that zach sander knows how to do well it's opening titles because again army of the dead yeah fucking chef's kiss of an opening montage well dude even the opening titles of watchmen are yes. fucking incredible well, the times they are changing yeah. yeah that that probably is one of the best of all time yeah for sure watchmen the man can do title sequences i thought you were about to say no wrong i was about, <laughs> I was about to say uh hang on <laughs> i strongly disagree all right nathan wipe the cheese out of your ears maybe you'll hear me better <laughs> I mean, it helps coming from the background of commercials, and sure. I mean, that's where the slow motion uh, love fest comes from. But Oh, definitely. Speaking of which, we see one of his commercials in this movie, his uh, Subaru commercial. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, that's the the one where when they're in uh, 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 Anna's house with her husband, the TV's on. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I I love that. So I guess let's, let's jump back to the beginning, yeah. since we already talked about the baby. <laughs> I do love that this movie shows you, uh, you know, this is another... Uh, you know statement of intent because the you know the original kind of jumps into we're way into the outbreak now yeah this one shows you the very beginning of it and Mm -hmm. how quickly shit goes to hell and it's interesting too this movie doesn't explain where it's i mean dawn of the dead doesn't either where this originated from Mm -hmm. but interestingly enough on the the deep speaking of the dvd again Mm -hmm. on the on the description on the back it mentions it's a virus oh interesting i mean james gunn came out and said it's not because it's supposed to be more supernatural like a vampire bite right a vampire bites you you become a vampire that's how he saw it and yeah we never really i mean that's why Ving Rains doesn't change when he gets cut on the thing mm-hmm. um, at the, in the fountain, you know? Well, that's why it's so... I love that they find they have to piece it together themselves. Yeah. Where she's like, I think it's the bite that does it. Oh, my God. When she puts that together, and the Jake Weber's immediately like, well, we got to kill Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Matt Frewer's a fucking dead man. <laughs> she she runs in there. That was one of the, my favorite lines ever, which is, Frank, Michael's coming to kill you. <laughs> yes. It's so... 
good though Mm -hmm. it's so fucked up though because it's it's just it's so cold she has some shit bedside manner for a nurse oh i mean the fact that that she's like i think it's the bite and he's like okay well then we need to kill this guy she's like no we can't do that yeah let me go run in there and then she's like go ahead michael fucking shoot him like yeah do it isn't that what you came here do it in front of his daughter it's so (laughs) it's so fucking cruel it is for this character it's so sanctimonious it's wild and then yeah and then as soon as she's like i'm glad you didn't do it and then you hear the fucking kablam (laughs) bang rain with blood blasted this dude in the kingdom cub oh Matt my god Frewer <laughs> is incredible with his like two minutes of screen time yeah. as frank though oh my god his death is heartbreaking. heartbreaking yeah yeah i mean no disrespect to um what's her name uh lindy booth mm. her character is the worst nicole is the worst yeah oh yeah that dog's not in trouble no <laughs> like that dog's not fucking in trouble and i i get it she just lost her dad and yeah. she needs something to latch on to she's got this dog that works but for some reason her portrayal and she's good like she's good in other things i think she's good in wrong turn and some other things i've seen her in but this character is just for the fucking birds she was in cry wolf right yes she was okay, okay. yeah yeah she's she's made a real good ringer of those horror movies yeah yeah for sure but no i just i can't stand this character and <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there but yeah. i guess let's go back one of the things you keep I... saying let's go back to the beginning and then immediately jump forward again <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry I get, I get distracted but yeah when you talked about how we see the the, the virus start or uh, the virus how the outbreak starts i do love that we get this pristine fucking neighborhood that she lives in like every house is the same they're all in a row mm-hmm. everything is like it's it's only missing white picket fences that's all it's missing and then the contrast of one once shit hits the fan and she comes out and yeah the next morning everything's on fire oh <laughs> everything yeah. is destroyed well dude and then the the neighbor that just gets fucking creamed by the ambulance why, why does the ambulance plow this dude <laughs> it's so fucking funny pancaked by a drunk dump truck driver <laughs> it's so funny but why he's in the middle of the street this ambulance makes no attempt to go around him and she's like well fuck it it seems like maybe the ambulance driver turned while oh. he was behind the wheel and Maybe. so now now there's a zombie in there that's just like i don't know what any of this shit is and i'm fucking scared <laughs> dude zombie ambulance driver that's a movie i'd watch right? maybe that's what this michael bay ambulance movie is gonna be <laughs> oh i hope and this is when we get the first uh bits of tyler bates score which i think is really good and mm-hmm. yeah. super insistent and like i i i always enjoy like tyler bates stuff on the on the john wick movies mm-hmm. and rob zombies movies like I, I think he's he's always good oh i got a question too before we go further from this point um how the fuck did vivian get into the house great question that was my question okay they don't react to the fuck like a neighborhood child just being in their fucking house her husband goes oh vivian's here yeah he's just like oh hey viv they treat it like it's their child right yeah and it's not also vivian acts like she's her kid too yes. she's like she's like i'm doing you want to see me skate backwards like, i don't give a shit girl i just got up a huge nurse shift if i wake <laughs> up and there's a child in my house i'm shooting it immediately well that's what she should have done well the, the weird thing too is some the zombies in this movie have incredible dramatic timing because yes. the this little girl comes in and just stands in the doorway yep. and waits for him to come to her and then bites him. As soon as he touches her face. Yes, yeah. And then later on, they stop in the stairwell yeah. mm-hmm. right before they are about to attack CJ. And, like they just stop and they just stare at him. <laughs> Honestly, in the stairwell, yeah. I expected him to just look at him and just start snapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. They go up one step at a time. Oh my God. That would have been fantastic. <laughs> I kept thinking in terms of Resident Evil, I'm like, okay, well, he's got the shotgun. If he waits for them to clump, he can shoot four of them at the same time (laughs) he lines them up and gets yeah gets the most out of his ammo yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) i will say the zombie bites in this movie feel fucking visceral yeah taking a chunk out of his neck and him throwing himself back onto the bed breaking the lamp and blood just spewing everywhere i'm like oh this this feels real yeah this movie doesn't shy away from the gore which i think is a is actually a plus in it because it, there is a realism and a grittiness to most of the violence that i think yes. really sells the horror oh for sure oh, it, it's a plus in this movie it, I agree. it wouldn't have worked well in the original for sure yes well yeah because he, like that, that one was more comic booky this one is more like documentary in some spots well it's it's the it has the the same problem all of these early 2000 movies had is it's got to be grimy and yes. real and in your face and disgusting like well it, again the the platinum dunes of it all yes. like that's that was what the uh the texas chainsaw remake went for it i think it works in that movie's favor too oh that movie yeah that movie works well with it 
I also thought, God damn it, the sun is out and bright as fuck at 6.30 in the morning in right. this movie. <laughs> right. Holy shit. But yeah, I, like I said, I like the contrast. I, one of my favorite shots in this movie is the, the bird's eye view of yes. Anna in her car driving down the road, the other car plowing into the gas station exploding it's really fucking cool like yeah. it, it it feels real and the look on her face like she's shell-shocked while she's listening to the news bulletins like yeah and that car crash made me sick to my stomach oh, it yeah. is it's shot really well yeah and i mean just the fucking paramedic trying to just rip her out of her car is oh, so fucking God. scary yes. like for from her point of view that's a great stunt too yeah that that guy holding onto the car is just driving like fuck that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hire somebody else to do that shit. That's a Chev Chelios move. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it definitely felt like that. Um, I mean, I mean, honestly, Chev Chelios would fit right in with this fucking movie. Oh, he would. He, I think he'd he'd be ruling the wastelands. Are you kidding Could me? Could you imagine a third act reveal and Chev Chelios comes in? I've been bitten. I just have to keep eating brains to survive. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that movie, Crank of the Dead. Crank of the no, Dead. No, no, no. Seriously, seriously, we pitch movies on this show all the time. I am. I think this is a legitimately good one. Yes. Cross this unit, like. Zack Snyder has talked about wanting to do a sequel to this movie. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yes. I'm in. 100%. I'm fucking in. I mean, it, this movie is leaning into some of the campiness anyways. Fucking why not? So, and then we get, we get Mackay Pfeiffer and, and his wife and Jack, uh, God damn it, Jake Weber and Ving <laughs> Rhames. We get introduced to everybody and then we get to the mall. Okay, so there's a line uh, where Jake Weber says, put the gun down. He's a cop. Mm -hmm. And I thought. It's been a long couple of years, but I literally thought, so? <laughs> like, was... and, and if anything, that's all the more reason to keep the gun. Yeah, no, it's like, he's a cop. Keep the gun up. Yes. Especially <laughs> after watching the Tenement Massacre in the in the original, yeah. like, right before watching this movie. Oh. Um, I like how when they get to the mall, it's like, hey, y'all want to use this door? Nah, fam, just chuck a toilet through the window. Yeah. Fuck it. What? No, my God. What? There's a door right next to them. And, and he picks up a crowbar and he's like, mm, not good enough. Yeah. And then just a toilet comes flying. Out. It's also wild that that one deadbolt holds hundreds of zombies for however long they need it to. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask, is, we see this all the time, shooting the locks off of doors. Yes. Does that actually work? I mean, not, not padlocks. I believe a padlock could be shot off. This is just like a flat panel thing. Well, I mean, I guess if you if you take out that chunk of the door and there's nothing there holding it, sure. I suppose that's true. I don't know if a shotgun. I don't know. Well, next time I come to your house, I'll fucking try, Dustin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he shoots the doorknob and they're just able to open it, but the door is still flat. The door hasn't been like destroyed in yeah. any way because they're able to close it again. Yeah. yeah. Door's fine. Yeah. I don't know. That was weird. Very strange. Yeah. This is when we meet the three the three security guards uh -huh. who are varying degrees of gross cj terry and what's the other one's name uh the the sap the sappy one bart his name's bart bart bart's the the goofy one that looks like he's got dip in in, in every scene the one who makes an extremely uh rapey comment ah, at one point in the movie yes yeah and then cj is fascinating to me because i really like michael kelly great mustache yep great mustache great mustache yeah. and i think he he plays that redemption arc really well. Yeah. Like this character, this character is pretty great. He's the only character with a fucking arc in this movie. I agree. He is. I agree. He and he, he manages to do it while looking like Diedrich Bader and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> <laughs> what a reference. Yeah, no, he he he's great. He's the only one I wrote down too. I said he's got a pretty good character arc. Oh, you know what? No, he looks like Diedrich Bader in Office Space. That's what it is. That's what he was reminding me. Mm, Two yeah. chicks at once, man. I do like some of the comedy beats in this movie like them having to keep the elevator door from closing as they're having to stand off it's kind of funny <laughs> yeah i also love like they're they they're a bunch of sort of like flyboy in the in the last in the original yeah. the, mm -hmm. the the security guards are very much like wannabe cowboys yeah like they're watching the news while tom savini is saying like shoot that one she's a twitcher and they're just like, wow, that is one cool motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, she's a twitcher. And then, like, the next scene, they start using the phrase twitcher. Yeah. Like, oh, look, there's a twitcher. Yeah. Yep. All of those cameos are great. Oh, I, and especially the Ken Foray one. I, 
he's so fucking good. But what was the Scott Reniger one? I I don't know if I'm, I I know he's in the. He's, he's the, the general. general. Okay. He's the general who's saying like we've got a couple of places over here where people can you know uh, evacuate to. Yeah. Oh oh that's right at at Fort Pastor. Yes. Yeah. Okay okay yeah. See that I, I I always miss him so that thank you finally finally I know who he is. And then Galen Ross has someone of a cameo, too, because there's a store named after her. Yeah, I liked that. Which does feel like it would be the name of a store. Yeah, where Monica buys uh, the lingerie. Mm -hmm. right. Bull buys is a stretch, but well, yeah, she takes the lingerie. <laughs> and, and Michael is so good. I, I love I love Jake Weber in the scenes where he's trying to, like, appeal to CJ. Yeah, yeah. he's like a hostage negotiator. <laughs> yep. He appeals to his ego by making everything CJ's plan. Yep. So he's like, oh, you probably already thought of putting signs on the roof. Yeah, like, that's so good. I don't I don't know. I feel like that wouldn't work for me. I'm like, dude, I get what you're doing. Fuck off. Maybe not. <laughs> Did you see that uh, Jake Weber and Ty Burrell auditioned for each other's roles? That's funny. I saw. I heard that. I'm trying to imagine. Them. But they work. Yes. They both work in there. Like Jake Weber is like so fucking kind in this movie. And like and he does that with a really flat delivery somehow. Yeah. Like he he you know, his his whole like I sell televisions at Best Buy. Like that was great. He's so good. Yeah. With dude, the dinner scene, oh. like where he's talking about like how like I was a like I was a horrible husband, but I was really good at being a dad. Yes. And it's just, like and it's just like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. oh, shit. They hit, he, the fact that he keeps that to himself until he's literally asked. That monologue is from a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, like, oh, yeah. Ving Rhames is like, I got to get to my brother. That's that's my agenda. Yes. Yeah. Like everybody's just saying everything they feel. And he's the only one that holds anything back until. Has an interior life. Yes. Yeah. But he's got a, he's got a gentleness to him that that you don't see in a lot of actors I agree. and maybe it's just because you're putting up up against all these other people that are chewing scenery but he's fucking great and i i think i think mckay pfeiffer's performance is super underrated in this as well and and the way he's written is really i just i there's something about the fact that they they write they present this character and everyone reacts to this character like he's a thug yeah well ving rames has that comment too yes so i actually think is a pretty good line of it's actually at the the Best Buy line. Yeah. Like, how how do you feel about taking orders from a guy that sells TVs? About as much as I uh, enjoy taking orders from someone who steals them. And then Macaw Pfeiffer is like, "Damn, you caught me! <laughs> Damn, you got me pegged." Yeah. He says, "The reason I want to survive this is because I want to be able to change things. Like, I want to give my kid a better life than I had." And yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just I think I, I don't know. I think he's making really interesting choices. And I like that scene a lot. It mm -hmm. just it feels like then that thread is dropped. I was going to say, I don't feel like that's genuine, though. Oh, really? Interesting. Well, it's it goes in line with what Bing Rains is saying. Oh, the world's gone to hell now. So you think you belong in hell and God's trying to teach you a lesson. Mm. And he's like, go in the bathroom, just say five Hail Marys and you and God can sort it out. Right. This is like his come to Jesus moment. Well, I no, I think he's just looking for an excuse to do what he wants to do. He wants to have this baby. He doesn't want anyone to harm his wife. Right. If someone's going to harm his wife, it's going to be him. So he's justifying all of it. And unfortunately, we don't really get to know anything about their life together or their relationship nope. because Luda is a non-character. Well, she gets like four words. Yes. Yep. <laughs> She's not allowed to talk. Yeah. So so like Monica's written to be like just this sex object. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Luda is written to be a womb. Yep. Like that is yep. that is that that is her function as a character. And mm -hmm. it's a real fucking bummer. I agree. But like I said, I, I just don't think. Makai Pfeiffer is, I, I don't know. I feel like he's a villain in his own right. Yeah. And I don't believe him when he says, I just try to make things better for my kid. That's interesting. I there, I just really like that. I I really like that scene. And maybe it's just me wanting somebody. <laughs> so many of these characters are so flat and written so one dimensional. Yeah. They're not written one dimensional. Well, yeah, they are. There, there's so many <laughs> yeah, of these characters are. are super flat. You can just and say I'm, it. <laughs> I, but like, and I, I guess I'm like reaching for any scraps that I can get. Yeah. Um, like I, I love when whenever they, they come up to the roof and uh, CJ says, who gave you permission to leave the store that they locked him up in? Mm -hmm. And Mackay Pfeiffer just does like a little like hand wave. Like yeah. he might as well throw in like a this isn't is like chris tucker in the fifth element <laughs> it's a really nice little character moment the way they get the one up on those security guys is kind of stupid because it's like when you have someone pointing guns at your face yeah and you punch one of them the other one's probably gonna flinch at very least and shoot yeah. whoever they are aiming their gun at so the fact that they're able i don't know i plus 
I actually I actually have to give credit to this movie because mm. I finally this has been a running thread throughout the season. What? I finally found someone who has trigger discipline. Oh sure, <laughs> and it's CJ. Yeah. Well, and that's why Ving Rhames didn't get shot. There you go. <laughs> yeah, he he actually does not keep his fucking finger on the trigger. Yeah, and then. He does later on, though, so he yeah. <laughs> kind of gets taken right back. Well, because he learned his lesson the first fucking time. That's very true. That's very <laughs> what true. What these characters needed was chainsaw discipline. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. We will talk about the chainsaw later, but we also get introduced to Andy. Fucking Andy. Who I think is, it's such a cool addition to this plot. Yeah. Me too. It's great. I love Andy. I, I love that we don't really get to know Andy. Right. But he is there. He, he's just out of reach. Like, he's right there. That would also be a hell of a side movie to me. Right? Yeah, I was just thinking about that, yeah. I feel, don't quote me on this, but I feel like there was an extra on the DVD about Andy. I was trying to find that, like, his, like, his, like, video diary or something. I feel like that was a thing. Like, it was, like, little, like, diary videos or something. Yeah. Wasn't that a thing? Yeah, yeah. I remember reading about that, but I've never seen them. Uh, it sounds familiar. I think you're right. And I always forget that they actually do end up going over to Andy's gun shop. I yeah. always forget that. And like seeing him and Ving Rain's blowing his jaw, like, or just leaving the jaw. That effect is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking chips. <laughs> Let's talk about this whole, like, when things finally settle down here, when we get the Ken Foray scene. Oh, also, yes, confirmed the the Andy's diary thing that it, those videos do exist okay awesome right on. yeah we we get this second caravan of survivors and red shirts yep. uh we, we get that really nice moment of michael telling norma well done when she like just tells him about all the people she saved yeah, yeah. oh i love that fucking Mackay pfeiffer and jake weber go outside to help and they're like get back inside you idiots yeah <laughs> like, we got this immediately <laughs> Wait, well right before they go outside though i love that they're just like looking at the they're looking at a closed door and they're like i can't see a damn thing no you're shit. looking at <laughs> you're look trying to look through a door right. you dumbasses i know i know this was also around the time i realized that the coffee shop that they keep hanging out with is called hallowed grounds which yep. fuck right off <laughs> yep uh, and Zack snyder has said that's his favorite fake store name in yep. the movie I'm <laughs> sure it's the one with the least subtlety so yeah. that makes sense starbucks refused to take part in the movie yep that's great oh, oh so many people refused to do product placement the yep. only ones that uh, accepted was panasonic wow and aquafina that's true and aquafina yes <laughs> is nora from queens <laughs> God damn it i uh, know i we got to talk about the stunt work in this movie yeah. because you know we talked about it last week with og and how tom savini was doing like everything himself yeah this movie's stunt work is pretty fucking great like yeah, there's phenomenal. a lot of zombies getting railroaded by these fucking trucks just wrecked <laughs> oh and we get the bp truck too which is yeah. a nice little reference it's the same that, yeah i like that the same company yeah which actually it's not it's not because they went bankrupt yeah right no the truck in this one says bp the trucks in the original said b and p oh, oh okay. close enough i didn't notice that yeah 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 if i think the, the original company went bankrupt like right after the og came out oh wow i do I, I we we get that great stunt with the uh the the one guy like monkey barring across the ceiling oh, which is God, so right. dumb but incredible at the same time pipe crawling ceiling zombie is what i wrote down the, when they go in the basement right and they, he had he bites Bart. Wait, is that the one? Is that the one with no legs? Yes. yes. Yeah, the Last of Us sequence. <laughs> yeah, in the basement. <laughs> yeah, that I said that is the. I'm saying it now. Scampiest move of the film. <laughs> yes. That, oh, that yes. is a very scampy, scampy zombie. Just, he just like. <laughs> he's like on a ride. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a ride. And he waits for someone to say everything's clear before he's like. Yeah. He's got good, like yeah. I said, the zombies in this movie. Great dramatic timing. Yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. One of my things though is I love. The scene with the security guys when CJ's watching Ken Foray's speech mm -hmm. and Bart's like, hey, I was going to tap that fat chick from Dairy Queen. Oh, and yeah. Terry has to literally say, dude, your mom is dead. Everyone you know is dead. Your whole family's dead. And he just says, nah, that sucks too. <laughs> what a weird... What is going on with this character? <laughs> well, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's something... He might be the most evil character in the movie. Like, oh, he yeah. Has, he feels nothing about all the people outside being dead, and he makes a comment about 
Anna's mouth that I did not care for. No. Yes. He also drops the one gay slur in this movie, oh, which I was right. like, yeah. I can't believe there's only one. For him for an early two thousands R rated movie. <laughs> but the best the best part though is CJ looks at him right after he says this and says, What are you doing? <laughs> right. Well, I think <laughs> that great. I think him saying that is more in line to that. He puts his belt on in his holster yes. without pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's right. Yeah. Which honestly, I get it. I like to think of it as the other way though. <laughs> it's a good bit. But he also has no trigger discipline either because he's just reacting to the lights and music turning on at 9 a.m. And he just whips <laughs> yeah. his gun out and just starts pointing it at everything. <laughs> CJ just wakes up and he's just like, dude, it's the uh, like, it's, it's the automated. timer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which means he does that every day. <laughs> yeah, he does it every that is, He is literally their alarm clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we get to Frank. You know, we get introduced to all the other characters. I love Norma. She's I wish great. she was in this movie more. She's like the best character. Me too. And her, her and Tucker. And uh, here's the thing. When they show the the overweight lady, who was actually, I think, yes, it was a stuntman in, in like a fat suit. Yeah. yeah, like bloated with the virus and everything. Yeah. Yes, yes. Very Last of Us kind of looking zombie, honestly. Oh, very much. Oh, I should mention the, the, the special effects, like the makeup effects were David Anderson and Heather Langenkamp, like did the effects. Really? Oh, that's right. Yeah. I knew Heather Langenkamp was involved. Yeah. Yeah, they look, yeah, the effects are great in this. They look good. Would someone like to explain to me and the audience who that is? Heather Langenkamp? She's... Uh, Heather Langenkamp, Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Oh, and, okay. and she Thank and you. her husband do <laughs> have done makeup effects for quite a long time. Actually, yeah. David Anderson has won a couple of Academy Awards for Men in Black. and I mean, that's New Nightmare. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> Men in Black and uh, The Nutty Professor, yeah. which is makes sense. The, those makes are sense. some incredible oh, effects. Wow. But I've, I've always watched this movie without the subtitles on, and this is the first time I put them on, but when the, the overweight woman dies and Anna turns to the group and said, does anyone know her name? Uh-huh. I always thought Tucker was saying... Deborah had a name as like a joke, <laughs> but he says died, died without, without a, name. a name, which makes way more sense. Yes, <laughs> but I always thought that was a good joke. I was Deborah like, Deborah had a name. That's what I thought was funny. I was like, this is this character would say some shit like this. That's so funny. <laughs> That's much better to me. <laughs> oh Jesus, I love that. <laughs> Just- 90% of this episode is just us laughing off mic. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, we get Frank's demise here, which I actually got to say there is some pretty good contrast between Mackay Pfeiffer hugging his pregnant wife. Yeah. And then Frank hugging his daughter, knowing he's about to die. Yeah. It's like life coming, life going. It's it's, it's on the nose, but it is it is shot well. And and it's I think the I think the acting from Matt Frewer is genuinely fantastic. It's I'm, good. When he asks it is him good. like so good. I want every single second. Yeah. When he when he tells Ving Rhames like don't you know don't shoot me before I'm actually dead. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's so good. And he takes knowing that he's going to die pretty well. Yeah. Like all things considered. Yeah. And, I, and again, the makeup is really good. We get a we get different uh you know levels of progression for the uh, the infection with him as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think they said they were using um, three different types of blood as well in this movie that I read. It was like Ooh. bright red blood for like freshly bitten people. Oh, yeah. Like a more brown color for the zombies. And then like once you're like fully zombified like and decomposed, you're yeah. like, it's like black. Yeah. Almost. Which is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Nice touch. Is it bad that mine's already black? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. That's cool. Oh, okay, cool. That's cool as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Venom. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> knock, knock. Let the devil in. Oh, God. I. I no, I don't even want to talk about that okay. movie at all, ever. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's get to the Richard Cheese moment yeah. when we get introduced to that. And a great montage, but like you said, it's what Monica's <laughs> first lines. Is fuck me harder, Steve. She, that's her first line of dialogue. Yep. And she's not even on camera. It's her, her tits that are on camera. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it's, not a, it's a bad time for ladies in, in this movie. Yeah, all around. Uh... But then we get what I think is like, it plays into what the OG was doing, just fun moments mm-hmm. where it's yeah. tell Andy one of these zombies that looks like a celebrity and let him shoot. Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Burt Reynolds, yeah. Jay Leno. Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> That's fun. Well, I love the, oh, Rosie O'Donnell. Nah, give him something hard. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> oh, it's so mean. But it's fun. <laughs> it's so well, and like Steve just like fucking playing golf on the roof, just like pegging zombies with the golf balls and shit. That's, like, a, good, a, good that's a good gag. Yeah. I mean, you probably would, right? I mean, yes. yeah. it's not going to, it's not like it's going to hurt him. <laughs> well, and then like uh ving rain uh, so what's his name kenneth yeah kenneth. yeah ken kenneth and andy playing Named after ken for yeah playing chess from across the parking lot with with like action figures yeah. that was great <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, this movie could have used a little bit more of that. Yeah. That lightheartedness, fun stuff. That light, that I like that montage. It's fun. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you get them. A mall offers so much opportunity to do a bunch of fun shit. And like, I, they barely, they barely show it in this movie. It's like, to get creative, man. Do you think they were worried about just repeating the original like uh, too much or? Probably. I think so. We needed a shot of Ving Rhames sw- like sliding down an escalator. <laughs> <laughs> I do kind of love the running gag of every time we see Steve, he's just going to the coffee shop to refill his cup yeah. basically oh yeah. yeah and it's time to leave when he's out of espresso yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> i got like that's kind of my favorite joke of the movie that's a good gag oh it's good oh it's great um i liked that at some point monica started dressing like kim possible like she's oh my god these like, <laughs> these, like cargo pants and like a black like tactile neck yeah Oh, Monica. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a character. She she isn't a character. That's the problem. Yeah, she's an anti-character. I, that's, yeah. Well, that's, I'm, I just feel bad for the actress because I'm like, she, she, she tries, but there is literally the only on this page i guarantee you that the like the character description was hot young blonde and that was where it ended conspicuously <laughs> sexy well <laughs> and apparently she they they literally like wrote like i think it was on set wrote more lines for her like she had a like apparently at that dinner scene she had a bunch more lines but they end up cutting them again oh bummer like they because they liked like I guess Zack Snyder and them liked her so much on set, they like gave her more to do, but then it all ended up on the cutting room floor. Oh, man. Which is a bummer. Well, I, I want to get m- more of her and Norman together because mm-hmm. they seem to have like a, a real, almost like a, a niece and or a, yeah, a niece and an aunt kind of relationship. Like when, when she's like comb- Norma's combing her hair and like takes a cigarette out of her mouth and takes a puff and gives it back to her. Like, uh, yeah. that's fun. That's like a good character build that you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And they do nothing with it. <laughs> right. In fact, the next scene is Norma getting blasted away by Mackay Fox. Yep. <laughs> and like, dude, that scene where like she's walking in, like you could edit this, like put in the fucking music from the good, the bad and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Take two graves. Oh, it'd be so good. Yeah. And then we get the zombie baby. The zombie baby is such a mistake. Yeah. I, I, I think this, if you want, a, it's already a heartbreaking scene with him holding this thing that's silent yeah. like in him talking to it you could you could leave it at that would it would it be better if it wasn't just so overtly like vfx heavy like the eyes and the baby shrieking like bloody murder i don't think so i don't know it did look like the baby in breaking dawn to, yes. to bring things back around yes. to it <laughs> yes it did <laughs> but would you say breaking dawn did it better nathan probably that was a big baby too God like, damn. that was a big ass baby yeah <laughs> Yeah, then we get Ving Rhames on the roof uh, telling... Uh, this is where they come up with the idea for the buses. Mm-hmm. First of all, why does this mall have buses? What are these buses for? I don't know. Okay. Shipping the elderly in. Uh, no, I've I've seen that. I've seen that before. The uh, Whenever I used to work at a mall... Is it like a shuttle thing? Yeah. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah, then. whenever I used to work at a mall, like they had mall shuttles. It was fucking weird. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. Like, it's an indoor mall, though. Yeah. Like, I feel like those are more common in outdoor malls. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is is it's like a, a shuttle from the parking that's way down underground to the top, but right. that's an elevator. <laughs> you don't need a bus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, d- I do like the, the montage of them like building their, their death buses. Me too. It's like a death race scene. <laughs> yeah. I like how proud Michael is of his little chainsaw ports yeah. like, in the in the sides. He's so happy. He's like, look, check it out. Yeah, you check yeah? this shit out. Cool, you can right? shove it through there and you can cut anything. Yeah, if only there was a way to safely do that. <laughs> right. Ah, uh, yeah. This does turn into a very Mad Maxian kind of movie with these buses. <laughs> it does, and it's fucking awesome. Right. But it falls apart so fast. You, yeah, but you could put like the score from Junkie EXL like under <laughs> Them sure. riding through the sea of zombies that we see, which mm-hmm. I'm going to have to talk about because I have problems with that. But we needed Ty Burrell on the back of one of them with just like just playing bass, like fire shooting out. Oh, that'd be fucking amazing. Yeah. And then like spray painting silver paint into his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Witness me. Witness me, asshats. Oh, that would have been the way CJ could have redeemed himself even better. <laughs> he gets the propane tank. He puts the flare in it, spray paints his teeth and then dives off the back of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that'd be cool <laughs> right this is where we get uh andy though saying he's hungry and god damn it 
the the ribs like seeing that the all the fat off this dude's body is gone yeah. it's so fucking sad yeah yeah they're like hang on man just five more days and he's like i'm hungry and again like a character we haven't heard speak but i care about his plight more than a lot yeah. of the folks so much <laughs> yeah. more and then we get uh nicole who just fucks everything up it, it's hard to pick a worst character when did she decide that chips was her dog when did that happen i, I, I don't fucking know five minutes ago chips's intro was great though by the way we didn't really talk about it he's like like the giant shadows along the wall oh like, creeping yeah them out in the basement right. <laughs> he just shows up like hey that's a good little <laughs> gag he's a good dog he's he's the goodest boy good boy dude him being lowered into the zombies with the biggest smile on his face <laughs> always gets a laugh out of me. Mm -hmm. It is pretty funny. They load the dog up with food and let him just skip on over. Just fucking scampers through the crowd of zombies. Mm -hmm. He just like ta 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 all the way all the way across the street. It is odd that the zombies don't want to eat the dog. I mean, I kind I mean, I would buy buy into it. Yeah, that's fine for sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I guess it depends. I mean, they don't really ever narrow down what this whole disease, virus, whatever is. Which is fine. It's not an yeah. It's not an issue I have with the original either. So I get it though. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I think the noise he, the dog makes would be more intriguing to them than that, than actually eating them. But mm -hmm. he doesn't. They don't seem to give a shit. But yeah, he gets over there, and of course the zombies get into Andy's gun shop. Yep. And guys, one of the funniest fucking moments of this movie happens here. <laughs> oh no! I I was in tears because I forgot it happened. But the whole movie, we see Ving Rhames speaking with Andy over uh, a whiteboard. Yes. Like they each have their own whiteboard that they write messages to. Oh, when he when he smears blood all yes, over the board and, and then holds, holds it up. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so fucking good. That's the only time in this one when it feels like they're acknowledging the idea of them like falling back into old habits. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. one of the very few times. But it's so fucking goofy because the guy was just like, hey. <laughs> uh, and then he chucks it. He yeah. like throws the whiteboard down, which is pretty great. And so they make a plan to go rescue him and uh, rescue or rescue Nicole, I guess. Rescue Nicole because she's gone after her dog who's not in danger. Yep. Not at all. Yeah, but they get over there, they, they get into the shop, they restock on ammo, they blow Andy away. Right. Get back into, they take the sewers, I forgot what you mentioned, they, make, they take the sewers mm -hmm. to get from the mall to them, and then on the way back, CJ gets not one, but two slow-mo shots of shooting propane tanks in this movie. Yep. So he throws one off the roof, got some really bad CGI fire that blows up off camera. Oh, the all of the explosions look real bad in this movie. Real bad. Oh, yeah. But yeah, they, they get back into the sewers, and as they're falling into the sewers, Tucker falls and breaks his ankle. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking terrifying. Yes. I love this. W CJ dragging him yes. while he dual wields pistols is yes. fucking rad. It's amazing. It's really good. C this show is CJ's character growth, because he would have just left this dude. Yes. For sure. Like, him, like, his, CJ dragging Tucker through the sewers as yes. he dual wields the fucking pistols is... Like that, I feel like that had to be an homage to fucking Roger in, in the, the cart, cart from the original, yes. right? It feels like it for sure. Speaking of Mad Max, so this is Master Blaster, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we get the weirdest part of the movie the zombies just stopping on the stairs instead of attacking them. Very strange. Yeah, dude, because they're about to have a 1950s dance off. I, I'm, I'm not joking. I would have I would have loved that. I legitimately would have loved that. It would have been amazing. But then, yeah, we get, uh, they load up on the buses and they depart into an just a sea of zombies like there's a wide shot they have here where they're like barely moving yeah this is a, a problem i have though with this movie it's it's a great visual and it's great to sell you on the danger they're in but this is actually something i have a qualm with a lot of zombie movies because this is an ocean of zombified people yeah. like it's mm -hmm. thousands and i don't get why here's the thing when you get bit by a zombie right mm -hmm. most case scenarios you're not going to get away you're going to get bit and be like especially with the zombies in this movie they're going to tackle you and eat you until you're just devoured right like yes. we right. see that even in the og one like when they finally get you they eat you until there is nothing left of you they pull everything out yes yeah. so i feel like when you have a zombie movie that's got this many zombies it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because there wouldn't be all these able-bodied walking around zombies i mean we see a few 
few like that are missing limbs and stuff mm-hmm. but i don't know i something is just weird to me like it is strange like did they decide that these guys are okay or are we playing by night of the living dead rules where some of them just crawled up out of the ground or or is it just like james gunn said where it's like a vampire thing once they bite you that's all they really want they don't want to necessarily eat you alive they just want to turn you i don't know very it is weird it's odd i don't know but yeah you're right it looks like fucking they're driving through woodstock 99 at the end of this movie <laughs> fucking limp biscuit just took the stage <laughs> it's just one of those days <laughs> i i do think the second time he shoots a propane tank is pretty cool because the shot of like all the zombies just falling over from the bird's eye is pretty cool oh yeah, yeah. that's pretty good the flames and the, themselves are pretty rough still pretty but terrible. the the visual like the the yeah the idea of it is good i like yeah. it and once again it reminds me of the fucking orc from the two towers <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah sure um but then we get the actual the buses on the road mm-hmm. and them having to use i mean well first of all we use ty burrell just screaming as he's chainsawing these zombies legs off that are trying to tip the bus over <laughs> blood shooting into his face and, yeah. yeah it's good he's loving it it's good but then we get Guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it. This is the best death of the movie. Like, by far for me. The accidental chainsaw? <laughs> yes. The character that doesn't have a name? Does he have a name? I don't know. The 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 guy, the or, uh, church organist, Glenn. Glenn, yes. Okay, that was Glenn. The Glenn who is a, a gay atheist. Which I will say, this is completely Ving Rhames' fault. Yes. You know, maybe announce your fucking 90 degree turn. Yes. yes. So that the dude with a chainsaw doesn't accidentally fall into another person. Dude. It's a great death, though. It Holy is. shit. Yeah. Horrifying. Oh, my God. Horrifying. Tripping and from like a shoulder blade diagonally to, to just the stern, the to sternum, just chains on some poor girl. Right. <laughs> but also, Glenn is a character that I wish we got more of because we do get a little bit of him, like when he's confessing to CJ and Bart while they're in prison and they can't go nowhere. <laughs> what a weird scene. It's pretty funny. But then he's trying on high heels. Right. And it's got, it's weird, but like, and then he also just casually tosses out there that he doesn't believe in god i'm like this is a, a character that's not a character <laughs> this is a character that well they, they give him all of these interesting character beats that then they do nothing with yes. so they just have him throwing out traits instead of actually because the I, this is another like i feel like if we had a com, a condensed cast oh yeah we could explore all of these ideas because this is a guy i would love to learn more about i mean let's let's do the math how many people are in this mall there's the three security guards yeah there's anna yeah Yes. Bing Rains, yes. Jake Weber, yes. Mackay Pfeiffer and his wife. Mm-hmm. And that's just the people that start in the mall. That's eight already. Yeah. That's twice the normal cast. <laughs> and then who come who comes in with Norma? So Norma, Norma Glenn, Monica, Monica, Tucker, Steve, Steve Glenn, Tucker, Frank, Frank, the bloated the lady, fat woman, woman, Frank and Liddy, Nicole and her dad. That's another eight. God damn. I think, yeah, 16. It's like it's like 15 or 16 people. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. I guess, I mean, you got to have a body count, but like you can cut that number in half easily. And and they even say, too, when Jake Weber meets up with Ving Rhames and Anna that, oh, there was eight of us before. Now we're, there's only three. So I'm like, God damn, dude. Y'all <laughs> right. suck at keeping people alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But yeah, they get the accidental chainsawing, the bus flips. Steve dips the fuck out. Yes. <laughs> And gets his come up, it's pretty well because Anna puts a bullet right between his eyes. But then we get like, you know, everybody loading up that's still alive onto. Oh, we should mention the whole reason they're doing this is because they're going to Steve's boat mm-hmm. yeah. to try to get to an island. Which I love that he jokingly says that. And they're all like, oh shit, that's a good idea. And he's yeah, like, a really good idea. What? You fucking idiots. Yeah. And yeah. It's an homage, of course, to the OG, which they talk about, let's go to an island. Yeah. Any island. Any island. Which I will say, pay it. Like, if you ever rewatch this, pay attention. Okay. <laughs> to Ty Burrell in like the wide shots uh-huh. of that scene and his little like asides he's doing in the background yes. are fucking hilarious. Right. He's doing a he's doing a lot of like eye rolls yeah. and like just he looks so incredulous. It's <laughs> it's kind of great. Yes, yeah. It's so good. He's very good in this performance of a character that I fucking cannot stand. Yes, <laughs> yes. But then speaking of Fing Rames not being the best driver, why does he drive into the pier? Why can't he just come <laughs> he to a stop? He into the fucking dock. Right. <laughs> like, what advantage did that gain them? I, it doesn't do anything except give CJ a reason to sacrifice himself, which also, he doesn't have to. No. He just tells Ving Rhames, go on, I'll catch up. And it's like, okay. <laughs> you also could have gotten on the boat. I guess the whole reason is they want to blow up 
the dock so the zombies can't get to him because the zombies do just kind of just stop right which doesn't seem right to me i mean the way these zombies are acting we've seen them climbing barbed wire fences right they could easily just jump in the water and waste deep water get to them i don't know no they're it's just like jason Voorhees. zombies can't they hate they're so scared of water yeah <laughs> yeah <That's> what, <laughs> and jason is technically a zombie so that tracks that's right and then yeah we get the reveal that that jake was was bitten uh -huh. uh, when he was trying to rescue anna in the streets earlier and in the streets and in the streets <laughs> and and a monica in the bed right guys yeah <laughs> right <laughs> he decides he's just gonna just stay and blow the thing is that's funny about this is he t he's like i'm gonna make the heroic sacrifice i'm gonna stay yes. here and just blow my brains out <laughs> he does it while staring at her and she's while staring at him. yeah he makes direct eye contact with her he also says i want to stay here and enjoy the sunrise and it is clearly the middle of the fucking day yeah. <laughs> it is like fucking noon yes when he says <laughs> yeah. but you yeah, know the fact that he's like they have a nothing relationship for some but the movie's trying to tell me yes yeah that they have a, that they're in love and i don't know that again i can't get over the fact that this movie ends the, the second to last shot is him putting a gun under his chin and then the last shot is her watching it looking at him yeah and then we hear a gun shot go off Kablam. <laughs> and then cut the black yep <laughs> bold way to end your movie well and then the movie becomes found footage yes oh i know yeah i wrote down it's like this movie becomes like fucking quarantine out of nowhere <laughs> the song over the credits is people who died mm -hmm. yes and again on the nose <laughs> who you who used it better this movie or the suicide squad suicide squad i was just trying to think of what movie had used it another james gunn movie yep. the suicide squad yep over the opening credits that's right so good i gotta give it to the suicide squad Absolutely. it's so good in that fucking movie i loved the suicide squad Agreed. i don't know if we've talked about it but it was great <laughs> can i tell you too yeah. when i first saw it I was so attached to the character of Weasel. Oh, oh yeah, sure. And I was like, oh, this character's great. And then, of course, the opening scene happens. And I was like, oh. The opening scene, like Weasel, that opening Weasel scene is so fucking funny, though, the way it plays out. like, oh, he doesn't know how to swim. Did no one see if the <laughs> Weasel so could fucking, fucking swim? It's great. <laughs> it's so good. God bless Sean Gunn. He's so great in that role. Yeah. But yeah, it turns into a found footage movie because we get to see, for some reason, Terry decides to become fucking HUD from Cloverfield. Let me just film everything. Uh, <laughs> and every, like, four times in two minutes, people tell him, put the fucking camera down. Yeah. Help us. Why, why would you? And it's thing, the thing is, too, this is not a long boat ride. Like, we see the island. Right. It's, it's huge in the background in the final shot of the movie. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, they find a stranded boat that's got a severed head that's still alive in it. Right. We see bits and pieces of... <laughs> tie Burrell with a captain's hat <laughs> I laughed because it cuts to it cuts to black when they shoot they say shoot it and they shoot the head that's in the cooler which means they put a bullet through the bottom of that boat yeah. yep <laughs> why don't you just toss the, the cooler into the ocean I don't know but yeah, then they get to this random island and Chips dips the fuck out. Yep. <laughs> Immediately. He's like, fuck y'all. I'm out. And I'm, I wonder, here's the thing. I, I read that this movie, I don't know how true this is, but that the budget got slashed mm -hmm. because House of the Dead came out before it and did terrible. Oh. And that movie famously is on an island. Oh, yeah. And this movie ends with them getting to an island. I wonder if there's any connection there or like, I mean, I know it's a connection to the OG, make that off comment but eh, yeah i i'm gonna say it's more referencing the original dawn of the dead you don't think they're trying to do like a thing of like tying it in like oh this is the island from that, no. i mean that would explain why there's so many fucking people there no, <laughs> no I, I don't think, think so. so what is this island why why are there so many people on this island no idea maybe everyone else tried to get away people live on islands dustin I, yeah i guess my favorite thing is so as as it's revealed that all those zombies are on the island, uh, we hear the opening guitar riff of Down With The Sickness. Mm -hmm. And um, what's his name? The oh, fuck. I cannot. Terry. Terry mm -hmm. literally says, oh, shit. At the exact moment where David Draymond would say, oh, shit, in the song. Yep. <laughs> like it's part of the needle drop. And it made me laugh really hard. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, we should also mention they have a very well placed shot of them showing like terry is just a great cinematographer he's showing that they're out of gas at one point yeah and then yeah the 
they are apparently fucked. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what, I guess there's literally no question. Camera falls down. It seems like they're eating. It seems like they're down with a sickness, I think. <laughs> they get down with a sickness. <laughs> nom, 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 But this nom. is wild because like the whole ending plays out through the entire credit sequence mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Like we, there's not a wasted moment yeah. in this since it starts. It's kind of wild. Yeah. So literally this movie's even more uh, close-ended than, than the OG. Like, oh yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's Dawn of the Dead. And we should mention, too, this is not the only of the Dead remake that has been made. I mean, right. it was a 2008 Day of the Dead remake that I think has Nick Cannon in it. Yeah. It also has Ken, or, or not Ken Furry, it has uh, Ving Rames is also in the Day of the Dead remake. He plays Rhodes, doesn't he? Is he really? Uh, I, I don't remember if it's the same character. He plays though. a character named Rhodes. Oh, maybe. I never saw that one. And I think there's a Night of the Living Dead remake as well. There's a couple. There's a 3D one. Yeah. There's one that's like an extended edition where someone shot new footage and put it into the original oh my god i don't know if we've talked about this before on air but have you guys seen i'm I'm not gonna get the name of the title right but i think nathan me and you have talked about this Mm. night of the day of the dawn of the bride of the return of the blah 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 blah. oh no i haven't it's literally just night living dead they redubbed it and then put in like little asides it's actually kind of funny do you guys know there's a sci-fi day of the dead series that comes out on october 15th yes holy shit kind of interested because it's sci-fi and i know it's going to be garbage but it's also well it's directed by steven kostansky who made the void which is great so that has me kind of uh, uh, uh on board i mean here's the thing i i'm i know we had a real rough go there in like the late 2000s early 2010s with zombies but mm-hmm. like my I, my appetite is not satiated like i can take more zombie stuff i think i think this new show is also i think it might just be a mini series i don't know if it's meant to be oh i guess it is an ongoing series huh okay wait that? i'll check it out i didn't know that fucking steve minor directed fucking the day of the dead remake i didn't know that either. oh yeah the guy that directed fucking h2 halloween h2o yeah and friday the 13th part two yeah. and part three yeah. and yeah. lake placid oh right let us not forget hell yeah lake placid A chance. well thankfully walking dead is ending and the last of us is about to start up which i am genuinely excited for me too i hope it's good i have a feeling it will be because it's craig mazin and neil Druckmann. it's craig mazin yeah like yeah it's gonna be good come on but yeah like i said zombie i, I don't have my feel of zombie stuff like mm-hmm. i i think the reason i gravitated so much towards the last of us is because it felt more character driven and that's what i want like this movie is not character driven at all mm-hmm. the og one is and that's why i gravitate towards it more because the zombie should never be in the forefront right. of your movie like it should i should always know that they're there but i should never be like you know putting character beats aside so we can have a cool zombie kill or whatever right. like well and that's kind of why the walking dead went so downhill is yes. that after like around season three or four like the fucking zombies like didn't matter anymore and yeah. they did try to make them scary again in the later seasons but it just i don't know it never reached the peak of those first couple seasons well the thing with the walking dead was amc decided to fucking penny pinch that show for no reason mm-hmm. like the first season was a huge success and then the second season comes back they're like we want twice the amount of episodes at half the budget you had in the first season mm-hmm. and that's why frank darabont was like fuck this yeah and-, and you we don't want you to do any of these side stories that you had planned yeah but that's why sam witwer is in the pilot episode of the walking dead because they were going to do these like flashback episodes every season Mm -hmm. and that's why the walking dead stays in like the same four locations because they're cheap as shit yeah see that's why season two is literally just like people sitting on a farm yeah there was this incredible bit where uh on this on the soup where they had edited the scene of Lori taking a pregnancy test Mm -hmm. and just they just looped it so it was like four straight minutes of her peeing (laughs) and it would cut back to Joel McHale just kind of staring at the camera oh my god (laughs) so funny and that that shows such a bummer because like there's good performances a lot of the times sometimes yeah but it just like for so what I did I think I stopped watching around season seven or eight I Mm. stopped at four but literally well after i think it was after season four i would watch four episodes a season the premiere yep the mid-season finale yep. the second half premiere and then the finale that's all that you need like you didn't and you, you feel lit- like you didn't lose any miss anything yeah i didn't lose anything yeah, yeah. wild no that show is the the biggest navel gazing show i've ever seen mm-hmm. but yeah i i mean i i will admit i watched uh the premiere of um what's his name uh 
Negan. Yeah, yeah, that that, that was a great performance yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, the fact that all the fans were like, "Oh, it's now too violent." I'm like, "It's a show about a zombie apocalypse. It right. should be fucking violent." The yes. show was supposed to air on HBO, right? And it got it got moved to AMC. Like, could you imagine an HBO Walking Dead? That show would have been fucking amazing. Oh, it would have been great. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and like I I don't know. I I did like that episode. I did like the violence. I'm like, this is what the show should be. It's supposed to be violent. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, f- fuck The Walking Dead. I'm excited for The Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> the episode leading up to his reveal at the end is fucking amazing. Yeah. Like them on the run. It's fucking great. Yeah. They do some good stuff on that show, but overall, that show could be condensed down to like four seasons. Yeah, it's the good stuff is so few and far between. Right. Yeah, you could narrow that show down to like four seasons and be good. Well, what it usually does is it'll do like, yeah, like you said, like three or four big tentpole episodes. And then every usually there's like one really good bottle episode per season Mm. like there's one episode that's like the star of the episode is alicia witt and she's playing like a scavenger who's like cornered them and it's this like incredible performance that just feels like it belongs in a different show i can't believe that show hit syndication i cannot believe it. yeah it's wild i cannot believe it Anyways, The Last of Us is going to be fucking awesome. Yep. I'm so excited for it. Um, I only have one little bit of trivia, and I actually mentioned it on the last week's episode, and I forgot to say it, but mm-hmm. Romero had some thoughts about this movie. Oh, yeah. So he he didn't have too much to say. He did say it was better than he expected. He thought the first 15 to 20 minutes were terrific, but mm-hmm. then the movie sort of lost its reason for being. It felt more like a video game, and he's like, I'm not terrified of things running at me. It's like Space Invaders. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said... He said there was nothing going on underneath the the screenplay. I agree. He's right. And I say that as a James Gunn fan. Like, I, I just feel like there's not there's not a whole lot happening. I even like Zack Snyder to some extent. Like, mm-hmm. I think he has he, his movies are either really good or really bad. I think Watchmen's good. I think Army of the Dead's good. I think this movie is good. It's not great. Right. It's good. Yeah. But then, of course, almost all his DC endeavors have been. Oof. Mm-hmm. I like man of steel i like man of steel too i think i might be one of the only me and you might be the one of the only people yeah i think we're like the only two uh that's another one that i i really liked in the theater and now there are elements of it that i enjoy but i think it's i think it's just been so swallowed up in the snyder of it all that it's hard for me to divorce it from that yeah i I think you have to not give a shit about superman as a character to enjoy man of steel because i don't i do i love i love superman superman should be this beacon of good and the movie should be bright and colorful and i'm like i don't know i kind of liked and plus that movie has got like the best example of how you could do Dragon Ball Z live action because the fight scenes of that movie are very <laughs> oh no the action's great that's not my that's definitely not my problem with it I would love to see Henry Cavill play Superman with a good script yeah I don't think you're ever gonna get it man nope mm. I think I think it's it's him playing Superman is like uh, Pierce Brosnan playing James Bond it's just it's never gonna happen unfortunately oh. <laughs> yeah I know I know yeah, GoldenEye's fine GoldenEye is the best of those four for sure you guys, want to say anything else before we get to prop cop and all the good stuff? Oh shit! Hit it, Mally. Uh, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Um, speaking of gifts, yeah, let's gift ourselves with a prop <laughs> from this movie. Sure. Uh, Mally, how about you? This was your pick. Why don't you tell me what you're taking as your own from the props of this movie? Well, I want one of the fucking vans, but like mm-hmm. before they're destroyed. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. man, fucking like Atlanta traffic <laughs> Ooh, cutting through that. They they had a real miss opportunity to not give these buses names. Because I feel like they deserve names. Yeah. Like the way they're like spray, like spray painted up and have like teeth. Don't quote me on this, but I think one of the deleted scenes is them doing that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I could be wrong, but I have a vague memory of that. I am a filmmaker. <laughs> Uh, Nathan, what about you? Um, so in the in the opening sequence, there's that great chase where Anna is like runs into the bathroom, mm-hmm. and we I forgot to mention that overhead shot of her falling backwards into the tub is phenomenal. Oh, it's, good. It's, it's really good. Looks really painful. Also, if yeah, if you, have you ever fallen in the shower? Yes, Oof. sir. It is fucking terrifying. It's the worst. It is literally the worst. Yeah. Showers are death traps. I mean, just straight up. <laughs> That's true. Showers are terrifying. My girlfriend got terrified like six months ago i just fell it on my ass and then i think i literally just yelled i was like oh like it was like, so painful 
But right before she goes, like as she's closing the door, look, look over her shoulder. She and Lewis have like a rubber ducky collection. What? They have like a, they, <laughs> there's what? like there's like six rubber duckies on the fucking Hold shelf on. of all different Hold colors. I noticed that it's so fucking weird. I'm pulling the movie up. Hold on. I was like, I literally paused it. I was like, how many fucking rubber duckies do you need? Hold on. I pulled this up. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see I it. I mean, you know, they all, they all have different uses. Oh, sure. Some of them are intimate. Yeah. You don't have a sexy ducky. Is it in the shower scene they're having? No, anything? it's when she runs into the bathroom. No, it's when she falls in the shower. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's okay. right before she falls. You gotta, you gotta have like a sex duck. Sure. A shower duck. Emergency duck. Other ducks. Darkwing duck. <laughs> <laughs> Ducktails, dude. Just the just the notion. We didn't really talk about this, but just the notion of having to, to call nine one one and not being able to get through—that's oh, pretty scary too. Yeah, and she plays that scene really well. We're fast forwarding through the movie so Dustin can see the rubber ducky. Yeah, I, I gotta see it. <laughs> Fucking worth it, honestly. Absolutely. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Did I miss it? Hang on. No, no, no. She's about to. She's looking up. Hang on. It's almost there. They're, oh they're my there. god. There's like, there's like <laughs> seven rubber duckies. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's what I want. All right. I want the, the blood smeared whiteboard that Andy uses that's to good communicate one. with. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's that's art exactly. That's, that's art. abstract art for sure. All right. Well, what about uh, bit part? Mm -hmm. And for new listeners, this is where we actually. Let's be honest. No new listener is going to make it this far to <laughs> after the <laughs> intro we had. So bit part, guys. Uh, what do we what do we want to be? Who do we want to be? I want to be the twitchy zombie that's in the fountain. Oh ah. yeah, that that Michael Kelly puts a bullet into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair uh maui uh i want to be the zombie bro that picks up the gas canister oh that cj shoots then so That's you guys good. both want to be murdered at the hands of cj <laughs> yep. yeah honestly i really struggled i mean I, it's a named character so i i can't say it, but my the one i wanted was i wanted to be andy just so sure. i could just be across the street from ving rams <laughs> but mm -hmm. since he's a named character i'm not going to take that i'm going to take probably one of the easiest roles you could have in a movie i want to be the paramedic chips that's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> i want to be the paramedic that's sleeping in the back of the ambulance oh yeah and is like hey and he just wakes up oh nice <laughs> That's all I want to do. <laughs> that's good. I think that's the second time this season you've picked a character that's just asleep. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Let's talk about it. Silver linings. And sex. Let's talk about sex. <laughs> baby. Let's talk about sex, baby. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go. Okay. Uh, look, all those zombies on the island got a tan. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> no. <laughs> That's really it. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. This one's hard, dude. There's nothing good at the end of this movie. That's true. That is true. This one is very difficult. Mally, uh, do you have one? I fucking guess. <sighs> uh oh. That fucking zombie baby is fucking dead. That's actually not bad for this That's, instance. Yeah. Normally, when you wish child death on this episode, it's not bad. I know. I mean, it is bad, but this one's not bad. I can get away <laughs> with child death. This one makes sense. Yeah. This one makes sense. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put two in here to mm -hmm. try and ape appease the audience that may be listening, being like, what the fuck? Okay. Kind of piggybacking off yours, Mally. Makai Pfeiffer did indeed get to bring his baby into the world <laughs> for about seven minutes. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, I think the big one here for us is. CJ redeemed himself. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. CJ actually proves himself not only useful to the group, but actually a pretty good person when he helps Tucker out. Mm -hmm. Also, I do love how his last line is just fucking figures. <laughs> right. As he's being mauled, man, and like not flinching at all. It's a good performance. Yeah. You know what? I, I do have another one. Steven got to go out on his own terms. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, that's like that's as that's as happy as it gets as someone didn't get eaten. <laughs> well, actually, and he wanted to so badly to put a bullet in Frank, he finally got to pull a bullet in somebody. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, no, CJ shoots three propane tanks in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he loves it three times. Three's the charm. I have a machete kink. He has a propane tank. Kink. <laughs> that's right. We all have our things. I have a Ving Rhames kink. So. Kink Rames. Kink Rames. I like Kink that. Kink Rames. Um, I gotta say, uh, I, I, Mally said his... F Didn't you say your favorite kill earlier? Uh, yeah, it's the fucking scamp-ass zombie. Hell yeah. <laughs> fucking scurrying along the hanging pipe. Mine's the pool cue through the head. That's I think that good. was so good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Like the stick through the head. I Guys, I'm not backing down. I think Monica's the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. Because how often have you like thought that in a movie that's got to change? So I was like, dude, be careful where you're swinging that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. And then there you go. You get the result. So 
Well, let's talk about uh, a double feature. This sure. is, a, of course, to pick me up, a movie you watch after you watch Dawn of the Dead. If mm-hmm. Dawn of the Dead leaves you feeling dour, what's a movie to put you in a good mood? Uh, Nathan, what about you? Yeah, uh, if you want to watch more stuff with the undead and people overhauling cars to fight the undead and using chainsaws willy-nilly, <laughs> Army of Darkness. Yes. Nice. Fuck yes. Mally? Uh, I, it's kind of an obvious choice, but I gotta go Zombieland. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I need to reevaluate Zombieland because I haven't seen it in a while. Dude, I, st- I still love that fucking movie. It's so much fun. Mm. That sequel was rough. I never, I never saw it. You're good. It's, yeah, it, you don't need to. You honest, it honestly will not do anything for you. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it has like a couple okay bits, uh-huh. but overall, not worth it. Like, but, uh. I don't have the time. Exactly. <laughs> the original is just so much fun. Gotcha. Yeah. It's like, it's like you know, I'm thinking you're a bit of a bitch. Like, Woody <laughs> Harrelson has just the best lines in that movie. Yeah. I was going to go with Army of the Dead because that's such a great movie, but I've already recommended that as a pick-me-up this season. So I'm going with another movie because I don't get enough Ving Rhames in this movie doing Ving Rhames. Oh. So... I want to see more of him, and I want to have just a fun time watching a movie after this one. I'm going to recommend Con Air. Oh, oh great. Hell yeah. Yeah. I fucking love Ving Rhames, dude. He's such a good fucking actor. I thought you were going to go with Mission Impossible Fallout. I just rewatched the Mission Impossible movies, and I, I yeah, co-sign on that. Yeah. I really thought about it, but Con Air is just goofy. You want something lighthearted after, right. after this movie, so. Well, and I mean, it's just... After watching a relatively flawed movie, it's nice to put on something that's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Know, I agree. Put the bunny back in the box. <laughs> I mean, that's a funny line, but no th- nothing beats for me the guy giving John Malkovich the time after he says sigh to say Anara. Oh, right. <laughs> so weird. I don't know. He's a very polite guy. Well, guys, do we recommend the remake of Dawn of the Dead? I think it's worth a watch. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good time. Yeah, it's uh, maybe it's a problematic not... time, but a good one nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, but it also it also has some good scares, some some decent action, and and uh, a couple of really good performances in there. Especially like if you're like if you if you know someone that loves Modern Family and only knows Ty Burrell from that. Oh yeah, <laughs> sure. Be like, oh, you should see this movie he did. Yeah. And then just put this on. And then show them the Key and Peel sketch where he's a Nazi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you got nothing better to do, sure. <laughs> I think this movie's got some, like you said, I think it's it's got some cool moments. It's got some, it actually does have some good shots. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I think the saturation, the contrast really ruined them. But uh, it's got like, even the scene of like, um, I guess Norma backing up the truck and like running over the zombies, hitting the railing and watching the railing just de- like just deconstruct. I love that shot. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's competently made, but like we said earlier, I, I just don't think that it's maybe saying anything or doing anything really mm-hmm. with the premise. It's just, it's pure popcorn fodder. Like if you want to have fun watching a zombie movie, sure. Right. But there's other fun zombie movies you could watch. I, I know a lot of people think this is, I've seen a lot of people say this is like Zack Snyder's best movie. I disagree, but it's still fun. Yeah. And I think if you really want to do zombies and Zack Snyder, Army of the Dead's a much more fun movie. That's all. Well, listener, if you disagree with us and you think this movie just fucking absolutely rules, you can send your feedback to us yeah. at uh, the Silver Linings playlist at gmail.com, or you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And while you're there, if you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and give us a follow and subscribe and leave feedback and a rating wherever you are. We really appreciate that. That's honestly the best thing you could do for us is just tell people about our show and follow us. Definitely. But yeah, it, and if you have a suggestion for a movie you think we should cover on the show, you can also uh, send those over through the email or through uh, the social media and over on our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash the silver linings. Play- oh, I'm sorry. Reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. There is no the. But uh, yeah, guys, this is the end. This is the end of, of, of our spook spooky linings month. Yeah. Is it though? It's not because... Like, yes, it's the end of the month, but like the zombies rising from the dead in this movie, we have more spectaculars coming for you in next month. Yeah. Nathan, you're picking the movie we're doing next. Right. Uh, it's our first November movie, but it is still kind of a scary movie. It's a little spooky. Yeah. Why don't you uh, give us a clue for that movie? Sure. Next week. The ice is gonna break! Oh, no. (laughs) You know what? I haven't seen the movie we're doing next week, but that was a pretty good impression. Oh, thanks, man. (laughs) This is a good impressions-heavy episode. Mally crushed it with Disturbed. Yeah.
Um, all right, guys. Well, anything else we want to say before we get out of here? I think we nailed it. All right. We nailed both. Both Dons. We whipped them. We whipped them good. Right. Just grabbed them by the ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for listening, listener. Please return to us next week. Where we're talking about ice that's breaking <laughs> and rest in peace oatmeal. And, and Donald, Donald Pleasance. Pleasance. <laughs> and as always, get ready to die. <laughs> That's it. That's it. God damn it. <laughs> Ooh, ah, 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 ah. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. Excelsior. 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 Oh, Look it up. Oh. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters!